Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colony's Byzantine. This episode, what we're going to be doing is trying to build a grand garden plaza out there in front of the plantation. We've got a nice big area to work with. And so this episode, we're going to be diving into some of the decorations, garden-based decorations, that the Byzantine pack has to offer. So let's jump in. So let's get to it. Now, much in the same way we kind of designed the, uh, the docks area with the siege works and the Droman ship, Oh man, that thing looks freaking amazing. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to use Ultimine to clear out a space. Now before we do that, we are actually also going to need to get rid of some of this oil. Uh, hmm. And to be honest, these cows look like they could use a little bit of rescuing as well. It's not often that you see cows caught in an oil spill, but I guess it happens. So we're going to have to zip back home and grab a couple of tanks to scoop up all of that oil. Now, oh, here we go. So basically, you guys had some amazing name ideas for our dog, and we're also gonna name him as well. So come with me, boy, if you want to live, because we're gonna give you a brand new name. So there were a few options. A couple of you guys suggested a whole bunch of wild things. Now the winner of the comments, I guess, we're gonna need a couple of things. Number one, a name tag. Boom, we've got three of those, no sweat. And number two, one of these empty fluid tanks from Mechanism. These are the best way to get rid of oil that's gumming up your colony. So where is the dog? Has the dog come back with me? There we go, there you are. Hey, come here, boy. Wait, are you my dog? Yeah, there you are. So we're gonna need an anvil for the name tank. I think we're gonna have to go over to Braven Boulevard. Oh yeah, that was the builder's name, Nicky Braven, of course. It's a good thing we named that district. So we're gonna borrow the blacksmith's anvil to Rename our dog. So the winner was Lupa. L-U-P-A, which I think might be Latin for dog or something. And while it was the favorite of you guys, there was another comment in there that was actually my favorite. And I'm really torn whether to pick the one that you guys suggested or the one that I want. Because my favorite one was Barcus Aurelius, which is supposed to be like Marcus Aurelius from Gladiator. But well, yeah, I mean, if you have to explain a joke, but there you go. So I don't know. Oh, Barcus Aurelius or Looper? Oh, 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 I'm sorry, guys. I know you voted for Looper, and I really do want to respect that, but Barcus Aurelius is just way too funny to not. There we go. Come here, Barcus. Oh, yeah. Wait. There we go, Barcus Aurelius. Amazing. Oh, all right. You and me, boy, we're going to go and dig out an area. So a garden plaza. Now, you guys are probably thinking, well, what does a garden do? in mine colonies? And the answer is, well, it's a tough one, but it doesn't do anything. This isn't going to actually improve our colony mechanically in any way whatsoever. But what it is going to do is look really freaking cool. Ain't that right, Barkus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the tank here. We've set up a control to change the item mode to bucket mode. Here we go. Now it's going to scoop stuff up. And fingers crossed, there isn't more than 32 blocks of oil here. I think we should be okay. So actually, let's have a think about this. What can we do with oil? If we look it up over here, find the right one. It's not add Astra oil, that's for sure. So here we go. These are the things we can do with crude oil. What's this? Oh, so from add Astra, we can turn it into, I guess, rocket fuel. That sounds pretty cool. Um, we'll need steel plates, furnaces buckets. Oh, this could be a tricky one, but I do like the idea of making ourselves some rocket fuel because maybe when the colony's done, we can build a rocket and find a new planet to build on. Okay, looking good. I think we might have got all of it. Ah, no, a couple more blocks over here. No worries. Oh, no, there we go. It's all gone. Ah, no, one more block. No, Yeah, there we go. The oil has vanished. We have fixed the problem. Amazing. So I'll put these uh, these tanks in my backpack, get them out of my hair for now, because we have some clearance to do. So I'm just going to use my fists for this because I don't want to waste the durability on my Paxel. And I'm going to ultimine away this grass to make it all level with uh, this grass over here. Let's do it. Ooh. 
Right, so there we go. We finally have a nice big flat area to work with. Now, I've left a bit of a steep incline over there because what I'm thinking is we'll have a retaining wall that goes all the way along there and joins up with the road next to the pier that comes over there. And this is going to give us a truly incredibly huge area to work with for our garden. Now begins the arduous task of filling in these potholes with all of the dirt that we've dug up. And there we go, the holes are all filled in, but we've still got these ugly little patches of stone, and yeah, don't worry, they have to go as well. So this is a job for the Paxel, bit of ulti mine here. Doesn't matter if we dig too deep down here, because we can still just coat this over with dirt, like it was never here. Here we go. And here we go, the last few little bits of stone here and there that we missed, and we should be good to go. Any more? Yeah, a couple bits over here. And the grass will spread of its own accord. Don't need to rush that. Don't need to worry about hurrying that up. It'll happen over time because it's going to take forever for our builders to build the whole garden segment. But not as long as you think because the garden is very modular. It's lots of smaller buildings rather than one big one. Which is actually really good news for our builders. It means we can use four at the same time and they'll do it much, much quicker. Also, these buildings aren't super complex. They're pretty short and they don't use a lot of materials so this should be pretty quick just make sure none of these saplings grow because that'll really put a downer on our build experience and let's go and get Barkus Aurelius back on the case how's it going Barkus? so step one a retaining wall now this is going to be really simple really quick because it's just a straight line with a retaining wall and doing this always takes very little time Although, oh no, right, so these guys have to be able to get to their huts though, so we need to make sure they can uh, climb up here. You guys alright? Maybe they're just having a party. No, there we go, you silly dopes, get back to work. So here we go, some retaining walls. So there we go, several hours later, and with a little bit of help from Barcus Aurelius, we have mapped out now the retaining walls that are going to hold this garden. Okay, well now to the exciting part. Now we're going to design the garden. So first up, we need to find the area that we're kind of going to build in. We're going to basically set out a big old rectangle. That begins over here. We're going to use, well, don't want to use dirt blocks because they're not very visual. We'll use hay bales for now, because they're a bit better than dirt. And looks like this is a good spot. We're going to give it a gap of two from the nearest blocks. Excuse me, Barkus, come over here. There you go, stay there for now. And so there you go, that is one corner over there. And we're going to go and mark off another corner over here as well. And there we go, some hay bales to mark off the area. Now let's give you a bit of a bird's eye view so you can see specifically the area that we've mapped out. So there we go, now one of the corners is slightly cut off because we can't make a perfect rectangle here, but I do want to keep that area down the bottom. Okay, so to find the middle of this area that we've marked out as a place to build, what I've done is I've built some hay bales over here. There's a gap of five blocks between each one of these hay bales. Coming over here from the left, three. And then over there on the right, three. And then the middle between those two is the very center of our build. All right, now it has to be in the middle as far as this way goes, but it can kind of be wherever we want down the middle this way because the area isn't a pure rectangle, so it's not going to look too bad if it's not quite in the middle of this area. So we'll get the hay bales out and plonk down a little bit of a middle for us. I mean, it's not exactly middle, but it looks close enough. We'll move it a little bit this way. There we go. I reckon that could be middle, it might not be, but it's close enough for nobody to really notice. Do you mind, Kayashi? I'm trying to dig up some hay bales here. So, okay, we have an area. We have some guide blocks down to help us with the build. 
now it's time to put down some of these bits of the garden. So let's take a look at what the Byzantine style has to offer in the form of garden decorations. Here we go. So we've got building, corner sections, edges, flower beds, sides, and square. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between an edge and a side, but we'll start with the building, see what that is. So we've got an archway here. Oh, pretty cool. So we can put these around the edge as kind of gateways to get into our garden. There's arch B, which I, oh right, just basically faces the other way and looks a little bit different, okay. And the material's not too crazy for this. A lot of this garden is gonna be heavily concrete. So what is the memorial? Oh my God, now this thing looks very cool. And this is a serious contender for the center figure piece of our garden. Oh yeah, this looks really cool. Can you imagine this in the very center of the garden? I think it would look pretty sweet. Yeah, very sweet indeed, but there might be other options, so let's keep looking. Right, so this is where the style pack, I think, designs around the center bit. Or does it? Maybe these are just square sections that aren't really edges. That could be it. This looks pretty cool, like a bit of a fountain going on here. Very nice. There's also an intersection. Man, I'm suddenly realizing this garden could be way bigger than how we've mapped it out. But yeah, if we raise this up, you can see it's basically just like a bit of a garden intersection where you can like walk along this um, this concrete. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, now check this out. There's also these mini little plazas. This looks pretty cool. This is Plaza A. Just lower it a bit. Very cool. What about Plaza B? Aha, yeah, very nice. But again, these aren't too huge. Now there's also the shrine. This looks pretty cool and again, it's quite discreet. Do you know what? The Byzantine style, it's a little bit Japanese, isn't it? If you took away the terracotta and the heavy white, maybe replaced it with some purples, you could get away with thinking this is a bit more of a Japanese garden. Now there's also the Tholos. Whoa, okay. Now this is also a contender for the center of our garden. And this is a lot more open than the other places. So it's actually a really big contender. Now there's these weird placeholder blocks around the edge. I'm not quite sure exactly what they are, but it does look like this building fits in really nicely with the area that we've mapped out. This could be what we put down, but it's not very cheap. Look at that. I think those are lapis lazuli slabs, very expensive. Wow, yeah, look at this thing. This is actually, I think potentially a little bit too big for us. Yeah, I think we're gonna dodge the Tholos because it's cool, but it's a little bit too big. We haven't got that much room to work with, so maybe another time. So let's do it. Let's see if we can find the center of the memorial and marry it to these hay bales that we've marked down as our placeholder. So we'll bring this down. Now I think this building might also have levels because it has a controller. And I reckon this is a great starting point for our garden. Boom. So right click and we're going to assign the main building bits to Leo and Jensen. Molly Moo and Ambriel are already going to be working on the retaining walls. So it's gonna be a while before they get started on the garden. So here we go, Leo Wolf Dragon, you're our guy. So yeah, we can use this as a guide plate for putting in the other cool things. There's loads and loads of decorations with the garden segments. Walkway, and here we go, yeah, yeah. So we can just basically match this up to that building over there. Like so. And the walkway should be the right size to fit symmetrically between the two. Yeah, amazing. We'll bring it over so it's not way too close. And that's looking pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. So next up, we're gonna want a gate for this walkway, a really impressive one. So we'll pick um, our favorites from the buildings. I think archway one is very cool. And again, is this the right size? Oh no, calamity. So there's a, th there isn't much consistency with these gardens. This has a center block of two. Whereas the walkway has a center block of one. So maybe the other decoration is a center block of one. Let's find out, archway B. Ah yes, this has a single middle block. That makes it much more perfect and ideal for the style that we've chosen. So there we go, we've got the gate. Now it's time to think about an edge, like a bit of like a border for our garden. So here we go, edge corner, and this is exactly the kind of thing that I was thinking about. We'll move this over like this, and this is where these little kind of guideposts come in super, super handy, because we can basically just move that over there, and this is gonna be perfect. So we have two corners in position, now it's time to decorate with a little bit more edge work. And we're gonna look at garden's edge, uh, do we want long? 
yeah, I think we probably want long. And this should all match up with the existing style set that we've chosen. Oh yeah, look at that. This is actually perfect. And this is gonna be the entrance. This is gonna be amazing. Oh man, so what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna take me a long, long time. I'm gonna swoof around the rest of the perimeter, put down some pretty sweet garden spots, and then cut to the time lapse so you guys can watch this thing come up live and, well, yeah, man, this is gonna be one of the biggest build projects I've done in this series. There are so many small buildings to this, it's gonna take forever, but I can't wait to watch the time lapse for this. Okay, so we've had a slight change of plans. It's not gonna be quite the shape we'd imagined because as we were putting down the fences around the edge, you can see it didn't really match up with what we'd put down with the hay bales. That's fine though, these things happen and we were always gonna have to build the garden based around the size of these templates. But as you can see, with the builder's goggles on, we can see what this thing's kind of gonna look like as it's built. Before I work out what we're gonna put in these empty areas here, and over there, and in the corners over there, what I wanna do is get all of this built first. Then we're gonna have a much better idea of how much space we really have and what we should be doing for our next steps. So, time to gather the materials, all of these mossy panels, red fence posts, concrete stairs, and let's get on with the building. Okay, so here we go, the Grand Byzantinian Gardens. So currently the agricultural district is named Garden of Hoobies. We're gonna have to rename that to something a bit more agriculture, a bit less gardeny, because this is gonna be the gardens. And what I want you guys at home to do is pop into the comments section a really cool name for this garden. It's gotta be something epic and big. Now the build is, yeah, quite a complicated one. The two girl builders, Ambriel and Molly Moo, are working on the retaining wall first around the edge. We got Leo, who finished up the trees there very quickly, and I believe it was, oh, who was it? Oh man, the other builder, whatever his name is, working on the memorial, and the memorial went up much quicker than I was expecting. The redwood is actually mangrove wood. So we've had to put one of those trees into a botany hopper pot and farm up some of that, but I think the garden segments are the only place in any Byzantine architecture where mangrove appears. But once the retaining walls were done and the centerpieces were finished as well, Ambriel and Molly Moo began work on the edge fences of the garden. And these are really cool to look at. There's like mossy panels against that mangrove wooden fence. I think it's a really cool contrasting color. But it did take these builders a long old time. This was a really long build because again, the builders huts are so far away from this garden. But putting these down has given me really good ideas and let me get my head in the right space for designing the interior of this garden. Because right now it's basically just a framework. We're gonna go in and pick some of the most perfect decorations to fill up this giant garden with. I'm thinking fountains, trees, hedgerows, flowers, maybe a gazebo, and maybe a statue or two. Pretty exciting times, so let's jump in and see what we can do. Okay, so here we go. Wow, man, the finished garden. Well, no, it's not really finished, is it? So most of it was done. Looks like the builder got a bit lazy here and didn't take off the tree from the top. But we can fix that. No, oh wait, there's some wood there as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's deal with that as well. So these gates that lead in and out of the garden are very cool. I like them a lot. We had to uh, put a mangrove tree into a botany hopper pot to get all of the mangrove needed for all these fences and panels. But you know what? It was something we needed to do anyway. It was the final tree on our list of trees to kind of gather. So I'm kind of glad we did that. But yeah, man, it looks really, really, really cool. Now, one of the problems is the whole garden is kind of sunk. We did it one level lower, and I think in the long term, this is gonna be good. Oh my God, it's so high. In the long term, this is gonna be good, but it means for now, we've got to clear out some of this grass to make it easier for us to see what's going on. So here we go. I'm just gonna clear out the floor here so we can see what kind of levels we're working with. Now there is a bit of a boo-boo, you may have noticed this, but yeah, this entrance is three blocks wide. 
but this one is four, and oh man, that's going to bother me. So what I think I might do is, oh, I don't know, because this entrance is, is the right size for it. I don't know. There are a couple of options open to us. We can um, leave it as is, or we can try and move the fences, like the edges over here. That's going to take forever and be a bit of a nightmare. So I think I'm not going to bother doing that. We'll leave it as it is. It will be fine. Sometimes perfectionism like that can come back and bite you in the butt because yeah, oh. Yeah, so there we go. Now the floor has been lowered and we can think about how we're going to do this. So yeah, basically um, we want kind of walkways around the side. This massive monolith in the middle, this behemoth, this behemoth, this massive shrine. What was it called? The plaza, the shrine, the something. Anyway, this massive structure in the middle. Oh, look at this. It's like an offering of, I guess, an apple and some honey to the god of red tulips. Sure, okay. But yeah, now we have this in position, we can kind of start to think, oh, we'll just do this entrance as well. We can start to think about how we're gonna kind of just decorate the interior. And this is a good question, because I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of other garden decorations that we can actually put down in here. Also in greens, there's things like flower beds. If you wanna put seats, pink tulip, we could even put this down. Now, some of these also have decoration controllers, which means they can be upgraded. Like, for example, the corner over here, this can be upgraded. No, okay, so it can be repaired, but there's no upgrade option. Fair enough. But I don't like that. I don't like the wood. I don't think it matches with all the white concrete we have going on. So what else have we got in here? Decorations, gardens. There are side sections. And these are kind of, I guess, um, well, yeah, these could kind of slot around the edge. I mean, they fit quite nicely. But what else have we got going on here? There must be some other cool side decorations. So gardens side, you got plant array, okay, a hedge. Oh, now this looks very cool. This could be the winner. Now this is going to fit kind of perfectly along here. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's pretty freaking amazing. And what we could also do is flip this around oh, and maybe put this along the edge of that structure. Now we will have to change the dirt blocks down the bottom to be white concrete so it doesn't look so silly. But this is a really good option. Yeah. There's also, where were we? So azaleas. Oh, they look pretty cool as well. Oh, those look really nice actually. That's a really good option too. Oh man, there's lots of good options here. Cedars, which are kind of like just trees. There's a long pool. Okay. How long is this long pool? Oh my god, that really is long. I, uh, well, it fits just about. It looks really cool, but uh, I don't know if it's perhaps a bit too long. I mean, it's an option. It looks really, really cool. Oh, but it also looks expensive because I think those are aquamarine blocks. However, the fisherman has been getting us loads of aquamarine. This could be a good shout. A couple of these along the edge might actually be really cool. So I'm gonna have a think about this, plonk down what I think is gonna look cool, and uh, maybe we can skip forward and I can show you what I arrived at, because oh my god, that was a big old build. Don't think I could go through that again. That was a long build. So here we are, from a big flat patch of rubbish and dirt, we've crafted a beautiful garden. There are azalea hedges around here, there are flowers, a mix of roses and peonies, and of course, the pièce de résistance, the golden eagle. This is made out of yellow concrete, but it's the perfect statue to go here in the garden. We finally found the place for the eagle. Well, my dudes, a massive thank you for watching this episode of Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. This episode, me, Ambriel, Molly Moo, and the builders built this colossal grand garden, and it looks amazing. It really is a garden worthy of the Byzantinian Empire. Now, if you're playing along at home on the Byzantine style pack, there are loads of options with gardens. Really, you can create something massive and beautiful. As long as you have the free space, the world is your oyster, so I encourage you to experiment and try out all kinds of new wacky things. But this looks really amazing and I am super happy with it. As always, don't forget to check out the Discord in the description. Hit like and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. And until next time, take care.